joining us. I'm Maria Soreo. I am joined today by two very special guests, our good friend, who is the president and CEO of the Palos Verdes Chamber of Commerce, Eileen Hupp, and another very special guest, Sandra Sanders, and you will be the new Citizen of the Year. Welcome. Thank you. So nice to have both of you here. Eileen, this is such a fun event every mm -hmm. year, and um, I, we want to talk to you, Sandra, about um, being selected, but I wanted to talk to you, Eileen, and bring you in here this time because People always want to know, how do you pick the Citizen of the Year? How is the selection process? Um, and then the event itself, because people should go. It's just mm -hmm. such a fun event this year at Terranea. Yes. So let's let's just talk first about the event. The gala is Friday, October 11th. Correct. Yes. Um, tell us what time and, and how people can get tickets first. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah. it starts at 6 p.m. Okay. And um, well, I, do, I do thank you for this question, because what I think is so special about this event is that it's really a community-wide celebration of our tradition of philanthropy. Absolutely. Um, you and I have spoken before, and I think there's some intrinsic values here amongst all of our residents. I've lived here for close to 30 years, and it's family, and it's education, and it's philanthropy. Mm -hmm. And so this event really honors four leaders, our Citizen of the Year, our nonprofit organization, and our community service program um, for their for their dedication to philanthropy across a breadth of different charities for a long period of time. So right. we really want to make this open to the entire community to come and celebrate philanthropy and how important it is as a value to us here on the peninsula. Now, Sandra, when did you find out that you were the Citizen of the Year? I think it was the beginning of August, okay. and it was quite a shock. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> well, you know, how was Sandra selected, Eileen? How does the process work? Great question. Well, we open up the nominations to all chamber members. Okay. So we have a period of about four to six weeks in the late spring where chamber members receive nominating forms, and they submit their nominations. Um, to a committee of chamber members who review all the nominations for all the candidates. Um, they review them anonymously. They don't know who made the nomination. Mm -hmm. That works out. Um, and then they make their recommendation to the chamber board of directors. So um, it's a very open and transparent process, and the committee has really great information on all the wonderful candidates. That's awesome. Now, Sandra, mm -hmm. you originally are from Louisiana but you've lived here for a long time. What brought you to Rancho Palos Verdes? My husband was an engineer okay. working for Union Carbide, and he was transferred here. Had three little kids and a sick mother. Uh-oh. But we came. <laughs> wow. You know. And did you come right here, right to Rancho Palos Verdes? Right to uh, Palos Verdes, yes, and Rancho Palos Verdes. Did you know that this is really where you wanted to settle and why? Uh, we felt like it was the best area. We really didn't know. We were from Louisiana, so we really didn't know mm -hmm. very much about the area. Okay. But it, se it was so lovely and so different from the south yeah, that, very different. with the palm trees yeah. and <laughs> the nice weather. And uh, so we loved it, and we knew the schools were very good. Right. And I guess it was a little bit different when you first came. It was Just quite little. different. <laughs> yeah. Hawthorne Boulevard didn't have any establishments on it. Oh my gosh. It was really different. That would be very different. Mm -hmm. Now you, since you've been here many, many years, you've been involved, you have a real estate business um, and you've been involved with a lot of local charities. Tell us about some of those. Well, uh, I've been involved with the Norris Theater right. extensively and mm -hmm. on the board of trustees. I've supported Marymount, mm -hmm. uh, Rainbow Services, what uh, WCA, okay. uh, and those are some of the uh, nonprofit organizations I have supported. You know, I think it's so important we talk about giving back, mm -hmm. and uh, for the Citizen of the Year, and many past Citizens of the Year, we mm -hmm. always find that people do well, live success in life, family is important, but really giving back and reaching out to others is just so, such an important factor. Yes, I would agree. And yeah. I think that's why um, the Citizen of the Year is an incredible program because it gives us the opportunity to honor um, people like Sandra who have just made such an impact mm -hmm. locally and really throughout um, the entire South Bay and, and L.A. area. Um, well, and I think even in women's lives, I mean, you're a successful real estate person and you've had many, many people working for you. And I think that women look toward women, somebody like yourself, even you, Eileen, as well, and see success, which is, I think, an amazing gift. 
Well, it was a lot of hard work. Absolutely. And, and <laughs> consistency. Right. Uh, working very hard for a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you become involved in real estate or interested in You know, it, after say? my children went to school, mm -hmm. I was really a little bored. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to do something. And my husband suggested that I get a real estate license. Wow. And being very competitive, <laughs> uh, I wanted to do mm -hmm. very well. So I immediately started selling real estate, being very... Uh, passionate about uh, selling real estate and helping others. Mm -hmm. It was good. Right. And from there, I uh, became involved with a, a, a small company, and then I became the owner. Wow. And then we started growing. And now I have my children involved, and it's easy to grow. And we've grown quite a lot. But I think you have to be lucky. We mm -hmm. have been. You have to work hard right. and be consistent mm -hmm. and be lucky. And right. we've been very lucky. Tell us about your children, your family. Well, I have three children. I have a son that's involved in um, the IT. He, ha he runs our IT department okay. and our facilities department. And we have eight escrow companies and 17 residential offices. Wow. So that's a lot of facilities it for sure someone is. to take care of. Yeah. And uh, we have over 600 agents. And he helps with... Uh, their IT problems and solves problems, and he has a staff that works for him. Mm -hmm. And then I have a son that's in operations, and he is basically my partner, mm -hmm. and he helps run the company. Wow. And I have a daughter who loves events. She's very creative, and we have really fantastic events about five times a year, which everybody looks forward to and sure. have fun. Mm -hmm. and. We have an awards breakfast, and so it's all very good. My children really make my company. What, what do you think has been the secret to your success? I mean, obviously, this is a family-run business, but what, you've done very well. Well, I think that is part of it. Yeah. I think sometimes when you have partners that aren't the, the ones you love and trust, That's it doesn't true. work out very yeah. well. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we're very cohesive, and we love each other, and we trust each other. And uh, everybody works very hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like that I've, I've personally worked hard. And we have a positive attitude. That's great. I think because we've gone through four recessions. And uh, we've just kept a, a stiff upper lip yep. and just said, <laughs> we will get through. Uh, one of my sons uh, has accused me of having a Pollyanna attitude. <laughs> <laughs> And, but we always come through, and uh, and I've been lucky, and they've been lucky. So uh, I think to be lucky, you have to be work really hard and try really hard. That's right. But then mm -hmm. you have to see the opportunities, mm -hmm. and uh, we've seen the opportunities, so we're we're able to grow. Right now, you said you had an you have an office in Malaga Cove. I do, and then a new one in Manhattan Beach. Tell us about that. Well, uh, we have a new office in Manhattan Beach that I'm very proud of. We're just finishing it, and it's downtown Manhattan Beach, and uh, it uh, has a flex space, which is very much like the lobby of a hotel. Wow. It has a big bar that can be used in the daytime for iPads and computers. You can sit at the bar and use iPads and computers. Mm -hmm. That's and great. Then, uh, at night, you might socialize a little mm -hmm. at the bar. So it's going to have three big TVs in the room. So it could be a sports bar. Oh, and, wow. Uh, <laughs> and it's very beautiful. It has about 20 offices. And right now it's empty. So we're going to be trying to uh, get wonderful agents to, to move in. So, But we're very happy. And downtown Manhattan Beach people are always walking around and right. enjoying the sights and going to the restaurants, mm -hmm. and we're hoping they will stop in. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, when you think about businesses, mm -hmm. I'm sure when you first started out, you know, no computers, no cell phones, all of this. So technology has really brought us into a, a whole new world. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so, for sure. I'd like to just throw in for a second Please. when you were talking about um, the question about, you know, what to what you attribute your, your success, and you said hard work and luck and seeing mm -hmm. opportunities. But I also would like to throw in, I think, um, integrity and honesty oh, and fairness. Sure. Those are words that I hear when people talk about you. Oh, um, and very, so that's why I wanted to just very throw that nice. in specific to you. They say they use integrity, honesty, fairness, yeah. kindness, and mentorship So um, of young people in the business. So I just wanted to bring no, that out sure. because I think well, that's, that's very, very important nice. about who you are. Thank you, Eileen. So, that's mm -hmm. very nice. Well, I think, yeah. and in the selection process, mm -hmm. obviously people are going to bring things up and, right. and why you mm -hmm. select certain people. So um, very, that's very nice words, of course. Thank you. And in addition, seven grandchildren, 
one great grandchild. Right. Mm -hmm. So they keep you busy, I'm sure, as well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I have a great grandchild who's 17 months old. Oh my oh. gosh. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. So what kind of a grandma are you? Uh, you know, I have to admit, I used to be a very doting, uh, spend a lot of time mm -hmm. with my grandchildren, of playing course. with them. As I've gotten older, uh, I mm -hmm. don't spend quite as much time with my grandchildren. It's hard. I still do. Yeah. Yeah. But not as much. It's, yeah, it's, it's difficult because we all get so busy with everything mm -hmm. and, you know, but I'm sure they're going to be very excited to go to the event. Everybody will be there. At well, dinner. I hope so. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be in trouble if they don't come. That's right. <laughs> For sure. That's right. And Eileen, mm -hmm. um, tell us how the event sort of goes. It's mm -hmm. an evening affair. Yes, it's an evening affair. Mm -hmm. And I think you had asked about tickets. Um, yeah. If anyone is interested in a ticket, all they have to do is call the Chamber of Commerce and we'll okay. be happy to send one out. Um, people can also um, do a reservation online. As a matter of fact, we have quite a number of reservations already in, and the wow. invitations are just hitting the mailboxes this week. So, um, so we're very excited about that. Uh, you know, um, I was going to ask you that: mm -hmm. how people mm -hmm. get invited? I guess people that come. Right. In well, past chamber years. members all receive invitations. Okay. Um, local government leaders, um, you know, really, those are the people that we mail to, as well as um, our honorees have a mailing list that they might mail to as well, or we'll mail to on their behalf. Otherwise, it's really just call us and ask for an invitation. Okay. So, because again, we want to make this a community-wide celebration of philanthropy. Okay. So, um, or go online, and it's open to the public, and we really. Want want to welcome the entire community. Great. Um, so the event to answer your question, it's, it's 6 p.m. at okay. Terranea Resort. And we all get dressed up. Which Everyone is gets fun. dressed up, which yes. is really nice. Yes. Um, and uh, <laughs> I just have to tell you, the um, it's going to be a gala dinner dance. The um, mm -hmm. menu is incredible. Um, so we're very excited about that. It'll be a really fun and festive evening and, and again, a celebration for the whole community of this important value. Um, we will have a cocktail hour from 6 to 7, and then we will start with the program and dinner and dancing right at 7 o'clock. It's great. And for so, people that don't mm -hmm. know you, Sandra, mm -hmm. you'll be shaking hands and giving lots of hugs that night, I'm sure. I'm sure I will. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, ladies, thank you so much for being mm -hmm. here, telling us a little bit about you know the, the gala and about you, Sandra, and we'll look forward to uh, a fun night. Mm -hmm. That'll be Friday, October 11th at Terranea Resort. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Maria Soreo and we'll see you next time.